what's up everybody? Welcome to another day at Bias for Build. In today's episode, we're gonna be finishing up the doors. The doors have some dents and some dings that I don't really like the look of, so we're gonna finish those off, get them ready for wrap tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna be working on building window louvers from scratch. We're gonna do some DIY window louvers and I'll show you how to build some for your car. And we're also gonna get a windshield in the 240Z. Stay tuned. All right, I've went off and got some new sandpaper, so hopefully it'll make sanding this epoxy primer a little bit easier. And in the last episode, I laid up a little bit of body filler in the trouble areas and the low spots. So I'm gonna be using a mixture of the DA sander to smooth this surface stuff out and a block sander to try and smooth these parts down. And if I can get all that stuff situated and looking good and all this stuff shiny, then uh, that'll, be, that'll be all of the prep that we need to do with this door. panel sanded up like diggity dog crap. This is the worst sanding experience ever. That stupid epoxy primer, the first version of epoxy primer that we use is just such garbage, man. It, it will not sand off. And they promised me at the paint store, they're like, it will sand easily. And it is just the worst thing sanding it right now. So um, I'm gonna continue doing it by hand. That's how I found the best results. Just getting it real nice and smooth as to it very, very gently and lightly by hand uh, with 240. That's getting it done. But uh, we're gonna move over to building the window louvers. Before I do that, I wanna go ahead and put a little bit of glazing putty on. So all these little black marks and stuff are where I need to do a little bit of work with glazing putty. And that's just kind of like body filler, but way, way lighter weight and much, much smaller for tiny little like nicks and cracks. Not cracks. If you have cracks, you got bigger problems. Nicks and pits. This is a bizarre transition, but I came out to switch shops and start working on the window louvers and there was a deer just like standing right in front of me by the shop. And so I tried to scare him off and he won't leave. He's been here for like 10 minutes now and he's just standing here and once he started to walk a little bit, I could see he's limping. It looks like he got hit by a car. But he's got some little horns on him so I don't really want to mess with him. It's too dark to see anything, but I don't know what to do. I guess I'll call the police and see if they can send like an animal catcher out or something. Maybe they can rehabilitate the deer. I could feed him tortilla chips. Really don't know. All right, the deer's still hanging out behind the house. We're gonna try and feed it tortilla chips and see how it does. Uh, the cops wanna come out here and shoot it and I'm not gonna let that happen because that's weird. Uh, so anyways, we're gonna just get back to work. Um, on this trim, you can notice that we didn't replace it with our other trim when we had the window guys out. That's because this other trim is much fatter. This is a little bit more low profile and if we sand down these grooves right here that hold the uh, chrome in, it's actually gonna be much, much lower profile. So that's kind of how we want it. I like how when I grab the big extensive camera, it's always out of focus. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop all the chrome trim out of this stuff, and then I'm gonna get our bracketry. This is what's gonna go on the side of this thing here. It's a big, uh, this is some cold rolled seven eighths by eighth of an inch steel. It's gonna be our side bracket that's also gonna bolt into this. So I'm gonna go ahead, get all the chrome trim crap off of here, and then cut this stuff to length and cut some tabs that are gonna bolt in to our studs. All right, I got my side rail in place. Um, the way it's gonna work is we got this piece of cold rolled steel that's gonna go along the side here and that's the outside of our window louver. Um, and then these come into our, our tabs. So uh, I gotta trim this. I'm gonna weld this right now here and over there. And then we're gonna trim these down as well. I'm gonna get a nut and a washer and we're gonna trim these down uh, so there's no excess on them.
Okay, we got our first railing done and attached to the car. This is kind of how I'm imagining it being attached. It's bolted on right here. I still got to trim this off right here, but then it just runs runs the distance down that way. I think that this is gonna be a good method. Now we're gonna to have to figure out how exactly we wanna attach the slats to this, but uh, I'm thinking the best way is to do it is gonna be attack them on the outside. We'll figure that out though. So we've got this, we've got it all measured. This window happens to be square, so it's really easy because all of these pieces are gonna be the same. Over here, Chelsea's kind of scoped out how we're gonna do the bends. This is off of a pet, uh, another set of uh, window louvers we actually bought a really long time ago. Um, and we always copy their bend. So we've got the bend scoped out and we're gonna go ahead and make our bend here, go over our width, make another bend there. We'll bend it up in our breaker and we'll see how it looks. Our test piece looks really great, so we've got that figured out. We know our width and our bending and our angles and our positioning of all the bends, so that's good. Next thing I need to do is finish off this railing. That's why we can't test with this exactly perfectly. Finish off this railing in the same way that I built this one. And then what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna stack all these up and then they're gonna get welded into the railing once we find the position we want them. And then a finishing piece will go over top of all these so they look really nice. So next thing I'm doing is I'm gonna finish off this railing and Chelsea's gonna be working on getting, we're cutting all of these pieces to measurement to length right now. We'll just stack them all on top of each other. Got them in the bandsaw. So we'll get all those cut up and then she'll mark all of our bend points. got the second railing all finished on this side. I got a little bit more cleanup work to do right here, but that's all good. So that's done. Next, Chelsea and I are gonna bend up all of the slats for, this, for the thing. We've got our louvers all laid on here and they're looking good just like the rendering of the car that we did before. We have seven louvers at, at a really not super intense angle coming off the back of the car. I think it's gonna look great. So the way we've done it before is with a piece of angled aluminum, really thin angle aluminum, and then we throw that in a vise and sandwich it so it makes a nice little channel. And then we laid that channel down here and we'd slotted all of these in here and then we put two rivets into each louver. That is one way of doing it, but we're trying to go a little bit more cleanly because this is a SEMA car. So what we're gonna do is we have our bottom railing. We're gonna weld here and here on each one of these to basically replace the riveting power to hold these things down. And then we have one nice trim piece that's gonna come across here that I will very gingerly weld into the main railing and sand down so it looks super clean. And that'll just have one clean edge running the whole way. So I think it's gonna be pretty cool. It's time to bust out the welder and get all of these permanently attached. The louvers are welded on. They look great. I'm happy with the way that they came out. They're nice and sturdy. So the next thing I gotta do is we, we're gonna put some decorative trim over this, like I said a million times, and weld it into this. But this trim, I don't like it. It's too wide. Um, we don't. We really don't need something so wide. So I'm thinking closer to, a, this is just a little over an inch. It's like an inch and an eighth. I'm thinking closer to about a half an inch. Uh, so I'm gonna have to buy some of that tomorrow. We don't have any of that in the shop. Uh, but what I gotta do first anyways is uh, come in with the flap disc and bring these down a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, that looks a little bit better. It's gonna give it a little bit more room for that trim piece to come in right nice and tight. I should have taken this off of the car. I dinged the panel, but there's a lot of prep work still to be done on this panel anyway, so it is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead now and take the panel and let's test fit it on the car, see how they look. It's 
It's really nice when you get done working on something and it turns out looking exactly like you wanted it to. Feels good. Feels really good. Still gonna be able to see out of it. Looks fantastic. I'm gonna go get some of that side trim when we go to buy metal for uh, building our front grill. So that's a wrap on that. I need to get back to working on the doors. Oh, but I did wanna show you how we got our front windshield installed. Enjoy. So that's how you get your windshield installed. You just call that guy and he comes and does it for you. Now, in all seriousness though, this is an old vintage window. Uh, well, no, this is brand new, but obviously the old car. Uh, so you use old molding and it's not an adhesive process. So I really wanted him to do it. He's installed a lot of glass for me before and does a great job. So this is different. And this is also a, a different brand of molding than, than just kind of like OEM or a factory reproduction. This doesn't have the channel for the uh, chrome. I really didn't like the look of, I don't like the look of the chrome trim anywhere on the car. That's obviously why we're doing it like black here. So this just removes it all together. Um, and he said that this gasket is actually a very very good quality gasket it's got lots of like extra layers and stuff to keep the water out and all that other good stuff uh, so they uh, they put a lot of a lot of elbow grease into getting this thing on and installed which is super awesome we went for glass that is no tint at all so no blue um, and they didn't they don't make a black one or at least local to me so we went with no tint so you could see um, our, our dimple dyes and our gusseting and everything and, and everything inside the car very clearly, so I, I think that that's the right way to go with it. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. And we got glass, and like I told you, I bailed on the molding on the back because I wanted to keep it as low pro as possible. Turns out we ended up just completely covering that stuff anyways. But I will still pop these off and sand all that down when I do the body work on this, on this piece. Speaking of body work, it's time to head over back to the paint booth and work on that door. All right, that is one door down. Now, it's not 100% ready for wrap yet because we gotta paint some stuff. We're gonna need to paint this chrome right here, the door handle right here, and the lock right here. So we're really close. Oh, and the back side of it. We're close, but still not close. All right, guys, well, unfortunately, that's where I gotta call it a night. It's 1 a.m. I gotta get home so I can get to sleep, so I can so I can wake up tomorrow and do it again. The daily episodes may start to stutter, we may start to skip some days. Uh, I won't leave anything out, but if we do that, it's just because if I don't edit in the morning, it's just more time I can spend at the shop. So that's, that's how that may go. It'll definitely start to get like that at the very end. We got seven days left. We should be able to get through, I don't know, four more days like this, and then I'll probably really start to panic. We're a little bit behind schedule. We're not too far behind schedule. We're supposed to be done with the diffuser and the side skirts. Eh, the doors are really worrying me and then we didn't really count in enough time for how much extra stuff all the auxiliary stuff that's got to be painted that's my biggest worry right now but we should be able to make up that time so thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate you guys head over to beers for bit but you know or my website beers for bit beers for build.com <laughs> check out the merch there we got the new hats in with the new logo we still got the shirts check them out there and uh please hit that subscribe button follow us along for this journey and other than that i'll see you guys tomorrow peace